Well, welcome, everybody. Oh, we've been live on time. Welcome to the first ever in real life Matrix Dev Room. Hey, woo! Hey. Who would have thought we would get there when we came here for the first time in 2015? Yeah, yeah, honestly, um, it's a little bit of a surprise. But um, hey, this is really cool that we're back in one physical place at last after at least three years of being stuck in Matrix. Um, so we have to do this bit because people might either be really lost in the room right now or they might be viewing this online and have no idea what they're getting into. Um, so, Amandine, what is Matrix? So, as you can read, it's an open network for secure and decentralized real-time communications. So, a lot of you probably know it for chat and voice over IP, but we can do many things on Matrix, as we can see, we will see today. Uh, uh, of course, the chat, the voice over IP, IoT, and then VR, third, um, uh, 3D worlds, etc. And we should probably introduce ourselves. I'm Matthew. I'm the sort of technical project lead and co-founder. And I'm Andine. I'm um, a Matrix co-founder. Well, basically the responsible person who tries to um, keep everything on track um, and let me play with computers. So our mission, slightly changing it this year, actually, because I think we're kind of converging on Matrix, trying to be the real-time communication layer of the open web. It was kind of the idea all along, and it sounded a bit over the top to put it in writing when we began, but the reality is increasingly that's where things are moving towards. You could say that, I know, Activity Pub is more of a sort of real-time microblogging or information sharing layer, RSS on steroids, whereas with Matrix, we're really trying to go um, as low latency, as we'll be talking about in a few minutes, um, and um, sort of real-time instant messaging, VoIP, whatever, um, on top. So the way it works, we said decentralized, we didn't lie. Uh, a bunch of servers who can talk to one another, a bunch of clients attached to the servers in green on the graph. But the key thing with Matrix, it's, it's called Matrix for a reason. It's because it's matrixing all the different networks out there. There is, when we created it, we didn't think everyone would jump on it like this. We thought that the in interesting and uh, intelligent thing to do is probably to connect all the existing things so everyone could benefit from it. Yeah, I mean, the, the name Matrix came from uh, basically a conversation where we said, hey, it would be really cool if there was a name like Matrix that we could use to describe this kind of substrate in which all these different things could be embedded. Like Matrix comes from Latin, where it means uterus, where things grow, where you go and embed things. And it's where the word mother and matron and, and comes from and maternal. And we thought that would be a pretty cool um, thing to kind of describe the idea of linking it all together. But no, we obviously couldn't call it Matrix because of the film. Then we realized that the film came out 15 years earlier, and that was already, what, eight years ago, and so forth. Well, nine. Is it, really? Mm, <laughs> um, and for hey, we'll use it anyway. And we did. And also, Matrix.org used to be a really nasty website, and so it was available. <laughs> um, how are, what are the stats looking like? Uh, basically, it's had, there has been um, 87 million users registered on the whole Matrix network uh, until today. Uh, so it's growing quite nicely. The thing is, these are only users we can see and know of. So a whole bunch of them are probably just hiding into big closed networks which are not connected and never talk to us. Yeah, so I mean, just for full transparency on this graph, which we show a lot, and it's obvious, I mean, the important thing is the shape of the graph, yeah. rather than necessarily the absolute numbers, because um, uh, this is actually based on the phone home stats that Synapse has, that Synapse has in it. So there aren't any dendrites or constructs or conduits um, flying around in here. Also, it is literally total MXIDs that server has ever seen. So it is including bridged users, it's including guests, etc. And the way to think of it is that literally half of these um, are actually bridged, and then about another half of them are guests. So if you wanted the non-guest actually registered fully signed up users, it's possibly reducing it by a quarter. But we prefer the bigger number. Sometime it's going to be larger than the number of humans on the planet, and then it's going to start looking a little bit awkward. But it still means it's people you can talk to on Matrix if they're connected, but so yeah, they're actual users. I, for one, will be reaching out to guest 4445442 on matrix.org from September 2013. The other small stat on the corner is uh, across at least 100,000 deployments, again, that we know of, and it ranges from Raspberry Pis, which I 
sure many of you have in the room, uh, all the way up to matrix.org, and it's like 13, 14 million users, and we're in the middle servers for uh, enterprises, governments, and anyone, basically, all, to, all, all sorts of size. And again, disclaimer on the stat here for 100,000 servers. This is based on looking at the destinations table on matrix.org, which is about 50,000 at the moment, and doubling it based on the number of servers which we can't see um, out there on the network. So who uses it? I'm going to seriously go through all of these logos. We've only got like three minutes before Jan rugby tackles us off the stage. Uh, well, we've put just a bunch of logos out there. So obviously, yes, I hope you've been following FastM on Matrix. And uh, hello to everyone out there who is currently streaming from Matrix. So we're always very proud to be uh, hosting FastM. You can wave to the camera. Hello. Hello. I was looking for it. <laughs> and a whole bunch of different projects that hopefully you know. A whole bunch of cluster of governments out there who made the right choice and uh, went for so data sovereignty. I mean, it's a bit crazy that, I mean, we've, we've missed out some of the sort of companies um, who we know use it, but honestly, a large number are like governments, whether that's France or Germany, Germany again, UK, um, NATO, um, Luxembourg, Sweden, Ukraine, um, or open source projects. It's not the most obvious mix, but you know, there's a huge footprint, obviously, on both sides, but also a bunch of companies, obviously, probably including people in the room using it too. Apologies if your logo or country is not on here. And if it isn't on here because you don't use Matrix, stop using Teams and get on board. In terms of vital stats, um, where to start? Cauldron.io. Yes. If people don't know Cauldron.io, it's really good. You'd basically just give it a GitHub or a GitLab repository, uh, sorry, organization, and it goes and spiders the whole thing, puts it in Elasticsearch, and gives you the Elasticsearch kind of credentials to go in and do whatever you want with the stats. So this is looking at it from 2014 with a uh, number of committers, number of issues and reviews. I'm not sure what happened with our reviews in 2020, but there was a mad reviewing frenzy. COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, people got really bored and reviewed all their PRs at last. Um, but, yeah, some of the stats is we've got 4,000 committers. If you sum all of the GitHub stars over the matrix-org organization, it comes to over 50,000, and we're not double-counting anybody there at all. Um, Loads uh, of clients. Yeah. 40 is way more than that. Uh, no, I should have reviewed this. Yeah, you should have reviewed <laughs> yeah. it. I try to figure it out. Uh, my preferred one is this one. Like, we have projects with over 30 different programming languages. We're getting almost kicked out, uh, Matthew, by... Are we? Okay, we've got <laughs> two, two minutes. minutes. We're just oh, going to okay. talk quicker. Easy, easy, easy. So, yes, 30 programming languages from everywhere, all sorts, and that's really fun. Yep. Um, so, today's menu, lots of talks. We're not going to go through them because we have a QR code. Plus, you already know because you're probably sitting here or you're looking at it on the internet. We've got a URL that nobody will be able to see, but it's the same as the one on the, the blackboard there. And also, follow along on, um, yeah, the schedule's there. But follow along on Matrix. There are going to be people out there in the void who we should connect with physically and create a proper hybrid room. Welcome. Woo. Welcome. Hope uh, you will have fun. And over to Florian. <laughs> Thank you.